Hello there. All right, this was the spur of the moment. And I'm not showing you birds and squirrels feeding. I am not showing you raspy or smudge. Unless they come in. Smudgy's asleep right down there in her big round fluffy like beanbag bed. Is that my niece, Brielle, and her fiance, husband, next Saturday, uh, gave me because their kitty, Nikki, wouldn't sleep in it. She wouldn't use it. And she figured, well, maybe Aunt Judy's cats will. <laughs> they didn't for, for several months, but I, I left it out there and I fluffed it and put some toy in there or something. Pretty soon I would catch Smudgy kneading on it. And then once I caught her sitting in it and kneading in it and she fell asleep. And she's been doing that for like a year. Um, and in the last few months, about four months ago, I caught, it was one night and everybody had settled down. I was at the desk. Yeah, my chair from high. Oh, hello, Rappy. Um, I looked over and he was kneading on it. You oh, are big boy. Hello, Mr. Big Man. Hello, big boy. You want to come up here? Come on. Um, but I wasn't going to talk about them. <laughs> and I don't want to talk about politics either. <sighs> Sometimes I need a break for politics, don't I, Raspy? He's eye kissing me. <laughs> Come on up. Come up. No? Um, we'll talk about mental health. Just, just short, quick. Um, sometimes, well, often, the people that least look least depressed are often the ones either depressed or lonely. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of us fat girls or guys, you know, if you're the funny one, your weight's acceptable to everybody else. You know, a lot of us feel that way, either consciously or subconsciously we pick that up you know you're it's okay if you're fat and funny we'll allow that you know it's the way society kind of makes you feel um but it's not only those people look at robin williams yes he had a disease they didn't know he had that was causing the depression but he was feeling depressed, was realizing that wasn't normally him, but also in the state of the, the disease, he, um, Louis Body, they thought he had uh, something else, Alzheimer, but um, long before then, he'd be sad about, you know, depressed about just things in life very personal life, um, but he always covered it with the laughter, didn't he? John Candy, Jim Belushi. Um, just because somebody's cheery, if they, especially if they live alone, like w without another human, check on them, check on them. I mean, if you care about him, you should be checking on him anyway. But, you know, just, I mean, check on him. Just, and, and sometimes being straight up but casual about it. My nephew, several months ago, had, had, you know, I had backed out of plants twice, and I really wasn't feeling well. My low vitamin D was, at that point, was, I was just... And he, he's in the mental health field, and one time he was over, bringing something over to me, and he asked me, he goes, you canceled tw twice, is, is that, be were you really not feeling well physically, or was it 
another reason. <laughs> and I knew what he was ta asking. And at that time, it wasn't that I was depressed as the main thing. It was I was depressed because all the health, all those little health things were like driving me nuts. And once I did find out what the hell it all was, yeah, it's an easy fix, but it takes like as long as it took to get that low. So if it took two years to get that low, it's going to take up to two years to get back up to normal. So it's like, how can you not be a little depressed knowing that every now and then? It's like, so I'm taking care of it, but it's still months later, I'm still barely noticing, you know? Um, but he thought about it. Um, if somebody's posting within one week more than three or four different things about depression or something like that maybe that's because they're depressed and that's what's catching their eyes so um and they're reposting so maybe check on them now it could just be because they're doing you know mental health awareness or you know it's depression you know month or or like fight depression month, not depression month. <laughs> Feels like there's been a lot of months that it's like, it's depression month, everybody get depressed. Oh, we don't have to, we already are. <laughs> um, oh, I'm not talking politics. <laughs> um, oh, I guess I am talking kitties. Hello, Mr. Pants. Hello. Hello. As soon as he heard me talking, he's like, oh, oh, m m mommy's doing something. Mommy's doing something. Mommy's doing something, big man. I hate this damn chair. It's too high. It doesn't swivel. It doesn't move. It's uncomfortable. I'm short, so my legs are... Oh, I just hate this stuff. I seriously need a rolling desk chair. There's no way I can... The other one just... It, it's... I, I can't even use it. It's seriously, it's, it's unusable. So, kind of sucks. <laughs> uh, you do, Mr. Rashby Pants. Uh, uh, hang on, guys. I'm trying to put my leg up on something. It's just that the chair is too high. And, and this is ridiculous. <laughs> my leg is up. I'm wearing shorts. This is so stupid. Anyway, sorry, guys. Um, do you want to come up here, Raspy? Come on. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, be aware if you're seeing one person posting a few things over a period of several days about depression, um, be, be let it be a, a clue if it becomes a habit for them to respond to like texts if they don't normally respond with two three four word responses and they start to ask find out and there's mr assy hello mr peans how much you want to bet he's gonna park his butt right here he's been doing that lately <laughs> you gonna sit down on mama's on mommy's uh desk here no oh you're not going to are you gonna come on back come on back and say hi to everybody oh he must be shy come say hi to everybody rappy come on come on Sometimes I can, I can lure him with a brush. It just depends how much he wants to get, you know, brushed or not. Hey, Booby, you want a brush? Oh, look how good that feels. Oh, that feels so nice. Yeah. 
so nice. Yeah. Here's my big boy. Here's my big boy, I guess. And this is a good thing for mental health. Right here. Right here. A kitty butt obscuring me, my camera, and whipping me in the face with his tail. <coughs> Come over this way. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> this is my good boy. <laughs> he just got furs all over me. And that was one of the best for mental health. But yeah, if you see anybody that you know that their personality has changed, maybe become a little more abrupt instead of like responding in sentences or just kind of phrases. And if you'd say, so how you doing? And they would normally say, oh, pretty good. You know, I would. And they start saying things like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. That's a big, big flag, trust me, especially women. When they say, I'm fine, or it's okay. I'm fine, or it's okay. Big red flags, trust me on that. Um, as a woman, and having been <laughs> around women my entire life, um, when they say... It's okay, or I'm fine. It's not okay, and they aren't really fine. But what they're saying is I'm not really fine, and things aren't so great, and I'm having a lot of trouble dealing with that, but I don't want to be a big-ass burden on anybody. And so I'm just going to shut up and be quiet and hope it passes. That's what they mean. Most of the time when they say, I'm fine or it's okay. Now, if somebody, you know, if they say, no, no, it's okay. That's different. But if they're talking about, you know, and you say something like, oh, I'm sorry, you can't get out a lot, you know, and they say, oh, that's okay. That does not mean that's okay. <laughs> In that respect, it means, yeah, I know it sucks, but I, I don't, I don't know what to do about it, you know? So, um, you know, even just texts, I have tried, now there was a few months that I, I was late in doing it, but for at least a year, probably more, I have taken to my nieces, my nephews, uh, my sister, my brother-in-law, um, every four or five, six months, er, I mean four or five, six weeks, I usually try to do it every month. Uh, I just, you know, like I said, my sister, brother-in-law, nieces, nephews, um, the kids, obviously. Um, Justin, I love you. That's it. Not, I love you, can you give me a hand? Not, I love you, I'll see you next week. Just, I love you. The whole purpose of the text is an I love you. Now, there's plenty of times when you're texting about whatever and you end it with I love you, I love you more, whatever. Um, but this is just, they get a text out of nowhere that just says, I love you. Just wanted to let you know. And the first time or two I did that, I did get texts. I was like, is everything okay? I guess it sounded kind of ominous, <laughs> which I could see just out of thin air. You start, you get a text from your sister or your aunt, you know, suddenly it's like, or your sister-in-law, and suddenly it's like, I love you. Are you tying up loose ends? <laughs> <laughs> or did you do something awfully, horribly, incredibly terrible and 
you're about to tell us. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> um, it means just what it says, and it doesn't mean that at all. <laughs> Some of it is just picking up the tone of voice. And if you say, Jenny, there's no tone of voice in a text. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. There is. If you, if you know words, how somebody puts something together does say something about their current state. It, it does. Um, but I think more than anything, it's just a, a gut feel I get sometimes. But, yeah, I, I've... I've done it for probably over a year, and I, I suggest highly, just every month, just people you care about, just a text out of the blue saying, I care about you, and I do love you. You're important in my life, you know, or you make my life so much better. You know, if it's a friend or something like that, if it's not necessarily family, just, you know, I'm glad you're my friend. You, you've made my life so much better. Just something like that. You know, it's, um... I just want people that they care about to know that. And I want to make sure I know that they know. Just in case. You know? Just in case. So, um... Yeah, make sure you tell people. And I don't mean just once. Make sure you tell people. Semi-regularly. Regularly. And I'm not just talking. Like I said, when, you know, I love you, drive safe, something like that. Um, that's, that, that's normal. Or <laughs> it should be normal. But just, just try it. Oh for a month or two just out of the blue with nothing no no reason just i love you i just want you to know that and then you know several weeks later they get something like that again and that if they ask what's that about i was like i'm just trying to be mindful to actually tell people i love that i love them and that's that's all i told my family and it's funny for a month or two, I, I was just, I was lucky to get my own shit done. And, and they started missing it. I noticed that I, I would get a text out of nowhere, just like, hey, everything good? And then I realized, like a month or so later, it was like, I started getting those texts about the time that I would have, so that I would have been sending out my third or fourth, maybe by then, text of I love you, monthly text. And I realized that maybe subconsciously they started getting used to, you know, my texts and uh, just kind of were like, hey, you, ca you okay? <laughs> um, I remember I have to do that again soon. I'm going to see everybody at the wedding next Saturday. So that is what I've been doing all day long. Sanding and go acrylic gold, a, a, acrylic painting in gold, these things. And then I did a gold leaf on them. My sisters asked if I could do this because the florist needs them on Monday. <laughs> so she's probably going to come pick them up Sunday night or Monday morning. But, and then one says Mr. and one says Mrs. and then there's the, the ad side, you know, the aunt. Mr. and Mrs. is big. But that came out pretty kind of cool. Oh, huh? that gold leafy. Look how shiny and mirror like that sucker is and I'm gonna do one more coat with the, this I did not use the um, extra fluffy brush 
so this is so you don't get like brush strokes so it's long and big so you don't get the brush strokes now I didn't use this because I want to use it on the final coat that gave that mirror shimmer here's the end and then there's the mister but I also have these two frames that's just the uh, the acrylic gold which actually looks pretty nice but you can see the difference between like the gold no I did this gold paint three coats of that three or four coats on these but you can see the difference in in shine between the two this has like a luster a gold luster but this has like that mirror me metallic look to it so I probably will go leave these puppies um, tonight I wasn't going to but I can see that they make a huge difference so I'll rough gold leave this just one coat I'll do these two frames there's two frames so I'll do these two frames I'm not sure these frames are probably she said something about a memories table and my sister told me the other day she texted me and said I don't want you to get blindsided, so just to let you know, Brielle has, a t it's going to have a table with memories, and it's one of the things on there is going to be a picture of my spirit twin son that passed three years ago, which of course that means, so I would imagine this frame is for that, plus um, the only frame picture we have of my mom and my dad together was in my wedding. They separated before we were, before I was by the time I was seven my sister was eight my brother was ten so we don't have any pictures uh but I did have one of like the family my sister my brother me my mother my my dad at the wedding so um but I know the grandparents are gone so I wonder if that's what these frames are for I don't know but I'm glad Deb did tell me that ahead of time because, uh, I mean, I'll still tear up. I didn't ask what photo she's using, but I did tear up. But um, I know I will tear up at the wedding, but I'll get the crying hut this week. So she just told me yesterday. So, um touchy because he hasn't been mentioned a lot these three years and they were probably doing it so it didn't hurt me but not having to mention that holidays and stuff was hurting and I did tell my my nephew that like he's probably related to the rest of the family that that's actually hurtful I understand you're not doing it because you some people they just don't want to be keep re being reminded me, it's not, I don't need to be reminded. I want him included, you know? So, I mean, I know he's included in spirit, but this is a real hard road, guys. I've lost, I've lost my dad. I've lost my mom. I've lost my ex-husband. I've lost my in-laws, both of them. I've lost uncles and aunts. I lost my grandparents before I was even, by the time I was seven, all my grandparents were gone. I lost a friend in high school. I lost a friend in my 20s. I lost a friend in Gaza last year. And all of them cut deep, but I can tell you one thing. All of now I haven't lost a sibling, thank God, yet. But out of all of them, <laughs> your child is the hardest. Your child is the hardest. And, uh, yeah, I just, I don't want to be around to see my sister or my brother go either. <laughs> so... I don't want to see that. 
<laughs> I just want to be gone by then. And I know that sounds terrible. But when you've had so much loss, it's just... And the last one was my friend in Gaza. It's just you get tired of loss. And with the people that you care about and that you love, that you've known all your life, or most of your life, and they're gone. You get tired of being always the one left behind to deal with it all, you know? And I'm not going to do anything to myself. I'm just speaking about things that most people don't speak about to others in public. And maybe that's why one of the reasons why we have so many of us feeling like this, talking to their cameras in their homes. Because we can't seem to talk about that in person. It, it, it seems like so many people are so uncomfortable speaking about grieving and worried they're going to say the wrong thing. But sometimes not saying anything is the worst thing. It's like you're pretending it didn't happen. And I, I get, we understand it's hard to know what to say because some people are different and there's different ways people ran ahead you don't want to say the wrong thing and trigger them but sometimes saying just that listen i i want to reach out and and i hate that you're feeling like this and i understand that you you need to get get through this but I, I just don't know what to say and, and I don't want to say anything that's going to hurt you I, but I, I don't want to just pretend like I like I don't notice that you're hurting and I don't know what to do so I care and I don't know what to do but I do notice so just you know Drop that at their feet, because, trust me, I'd rather hear somebody say, listen, I haven't mentioned Rocky Gabriel, because I don't know what's going to trigger you good and what's going to trigger you bad, and, and I don't want to ruin a holiday, you know, by having a seat for him and have you lose it, or, or I just don't know what to do, and I don't know what to say. I would rather have somebody tell me that and let them know they're in just as much of a twist about how to deal with this as I am because it makes me feel like I'm I'm not all alone in that echo chamber of of tears you know and uh sometimes just somebody acknowledging that they, they don't even know what to fucking say is a relief because sometimes I don't know what to say and I, I don't know what to tell you I need except I just need to cry and I need somebody here to know what he was to me you know especially since the time from 7 to 15 they were with their dad and I didn't get a 24 hour 24 7 kind of relationship and I was putting everything into when they graduate high school we'll have the summer to get to know each other and that was this past summer so obviously that it didn't happen So, from somebody who I wouldn't necessarily say I'm depressed, but I'm dealing with 
fending off depression a lot. Some of that is because of the low vitamin D. In fact, I have to get it refilled on Monday. Um, I take one a week. Uh, some of that is the low D because it was so low. <clears throat> I mean, severely low that um, it, it affects mental health at that point. It was affecting my, my nerve development. It was affecting my muscle muscle and nerve and um actually was affecting the bones too it it it, it affected everything negatively and uh, vitamin d is seriously important vitamin d like from the sun and the reason it got that way was because of covid when they said it was three years where they really were like stay inside go out when there's not a lot of people you know that wasn't often that there weren't people around they said stay inside and I stayed inside um apparently I stayed inside very well because I wasn't getting enough D plus I never got COVID until last January I mean Four years <laughs> through the worst of COVID, I didn't get it. Oh, just going by? <laughs> Is this hilarious? You tell me, he knew damn well. Huh. You're a funny man. You're a funny kitty. Yes, you are. You're a funny boy. He's not lack, lack, looking for attention, is he? Yeah. Hmm? You telling me we gotta leave? Oh, you gonna turn off the pink? No, you're gonna turn off the camera. Silly guy. Hello, Raspies. Mr. Raspy. You're the mean one, Mr. Grinch. Uh, excuse me, are we getting a little... Wow, just make yourself at home. Shove my keyboard off. Just... Just... <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha, Mr. Rashby's. You're purring and you're feisty. Your tail slashing. If you get my hand by your mouth, you're gonna go for it. You like me petting, but you don't like being grim. Huh. You gonna go scratch something now? Huh? Ah, ah, oh. oh, he got me back. He released all the fur on me. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go, uh... <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I guess, I guess, uh... This works for helping depression, too. So, oh, he's finally leaving me. Oh, don't, don't bother your sister! Don't, don't, don't bother her. He's going to wake her up. No! 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 Don't wake her up. Stop. Stop it. Peace out, guys. He's trying to wake her up. He's such a little brat. <laughs>